Yeah. Alright everyone, so I'm just going to just double check that we're actually going live now. Let's have a quick look. Is it live now? It should be, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so um, we've had a few requests in regards to people wanting to know uh, more about what we've been up to on, on our day to day basis in, in trading and um, what it takes to be successful as an individual, not necessarily just a trader, but maybe an entrepreneur as well. So I'll be touching base on that. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Samuel, I'm the director at Samuel Co Trading. Um, I started the company back in 2012 and really grew my trading knowledge through that. Um, today I've got uh, two of my traders with me. Um, I've got Harrison, do you want to introduce yourself? I'm Harrison, I'm on the technical side of things. Hi, I'm Omar, I'm the uh, fundamental analyst here at Samuel Car Trading. Brilliant. So we're just going to give you a, a little round up of what we think is uh, going to be important over tomorrow and on Friday. Um, you know, we've got an important uh, few days coming out in regards to that tomorrow. Um, and um, in regards to that, uh, we're going to start off just by looking at uh, cable, if you can have a look up here. So we have got uh, cable at the moment is currently trading um, within the range at the moment, as you can see. Um, this is something that we want to take into account. Obviously, we've got uh, big news tomorrow, which um, Omar will be um, covering in regards to exactly what this is. Um, in, in regards to other news, in the Euro, we've seen some downside pressure throughout the trading session today. Um, we've, seen, we've seen some nice uh, selling coming off in regards to that. Um, we had some nice short positions in play on uh, Euro, US dollar. Um, if I just hand you over to Omar, he will give you a roundup of, of what you should be focusing on on uh, tomorrow and on Friday. So, hi. So Thursday, we do expect a interest rate cut from the Bank of England uh, by 25 base points. Uh, if that does come to play, we uh, we do expect short positions at one spot 34. Um, devaluing in in cable will will take effect if interest rate cuts are made. Brilliant. So in regards to that, um, we have had rumours from various different uh, institutions that you know short positions are in place at uh, one spot three four. Um, so if we're looking at cable at the moment, the current range is at around one point three three six two. So one point three four is around this level here is um, where we're expected to see the selling come into play. Um, that is the, the kind of area where uh, we're looking to see how it reacts with, um, see if that level is reached in the pre-spike before the news uh, with, the, with the BOE talking um, and see exactly what happens um, in regards to that level. Um, that's something that's going to be a big focus for us throughout the, the, the play tomorrow. Um, is there anything you would like to add from a technical point of view, Harrison? Um, just that FTSE has been falling off for the last few days, continuing to sell off, getting pressed lower. Currently trading at its lowest price since mid-July. Uh, the commodity markets, WTI has recovered some ground, bringing it back to $40 per barrel. Um, other than that, we should expect to see quite a lot of volatility tomorrow uh, regarding the interest rate decision and the non-farm payroll. Brilliant. Uh, and, and do we have any expectations on the non-farm payrolls at the moment? No. Okay. Um, so as you can see from the board as well, you can see the UK 100 and the selling that's, um, that's coming to the play throughout the session. Uh, for those that follow me quite, uh, quite aggressively on social, on social media, you will know that um, I'm quite bearish on the FTSE at the moment. Um, after the, obviously the Brexit, we've had a strong rally now. Um, and you can see the market's really starting to slow down. I, I personally predict that we, we can see this back in uh, the 6,000 level. You know, we're starting to see the uh, stress of the Brexit come into play with the uh, PMI figures and, and things like that coming out of the UK. And that's um, only becoming more recent now. You know, you had a lot of uh, kind of economists saying that the Brexit isn't bothering us um, from a stats point of view, from an uh, economy point of view. However, um, you know, there is going to be a lag in those stats. It's, it takes a while for that um, pressure to, to, to kind of build up. And that's kind of exactly what we're seeing. Um, Dale, do we have any, any questions that are, uh, have popped up through our quick analysis of the markets? Uh, we haven't got any questions at the moment, but if any viewers would like to uh, put their questions forward, be happy to ask Sam and the guys um, what you have to ask. Okay, brilliant. So um, we'll move on to our next point then, and that's kind of a question that I get asked a lot, and that's 
what makes um, what makes a trade successful, and exactly how, how do you benchmark that, and and how do you progress? I think especially when you're starting early in trading, you get um, a, a lot of people. It's usually people that are close to you as well because they care most about you. Um, putting you off from trading is uh, deemed as risky. Um, trading can be risky if you don't use strict risk management, sticking to your one percent rules, um, things like that, and. What that can do is that can play a negative effect on your mindset and really kind of discourage you from trading, joining the idea of um, trading. And um, that, that's, that's the main kind of halt that you have when you first start is your surrounding environment. <clears throat> now, your surrounding environment has to be a positive one. And especially when I started trading, um, I didn't have a positive environment. I had a lot of doubters. Um, I had a lot of people say that I can't trade and that, that uh, you know, this maybe isn't for you, you didn't come from that kind of financial background and things like that, but, but I, I kind of disregarded that and that kind of propelled me to try even more. Um, so my first kind of advice for how to be a successful trader is to socialise and be around like-minded people as much as you can. Um, now I know that sounds a lot easier than, than done. Um, when I first started Believe and I didn't have that kind of social circle. So what I used to do is listen to a lot of ebooks, a lot of motivational talks. Um, I'd listen to a lot of successful people and see what kind of characteristic traits that they had that I could mimic and copy to help develop myself not only as a person but also as a trader and an entrepreneur. So being in that environment is very key to make sure that you are focusing on yourself and you're focusing on development. Um, the thing with trading is it can be seen as, you know, your first when you're starting out, the earnings aren't exactly going to be high unless you've got a huge account. Now, that's something that uh, gets put off as well, you know, earnings. But what you'll find is that someone earns a standard wage of, say, 24 or 26,000 pounds a year. They're going to be on that for a fair amount of time before they move up to, say, 30. Well, trading, if you're good at trading, that curve can be exponential and you'll soon overtake that individual on a standard kind of 9 to 5 job and then progress further past that and, and accelerate. It's, um, it's crucial that you don't let those kind of two things put you off. Um, I think as well, as, uh, there's a lot of information out there. You know, there's so many different types of sources so many different types of information. Um, it's, a lot of it's retail value and that's just not good enough. Um, it's very important to learn from professional individuals um, that are regulated. Uh, you see a lot of people out there running training that's, that's, that's not regulated and that's a, that's a risk to yourself. You know, you're learning from someone that isn't regulated, that isn't recognized by a respectable body and uh, it's, it's crucial that if you're going out and taking those steps to learn from someone that you learn from someone with experience, with a track record, and that is uh, recognised within the sector. Um, they're kind of my main points. Um, any questions so far? No, we've got no questions at the moment. Okay. Um, going forward, I think it's uh, very important to kind of show you uh, uh, how I tackled um, my challenges and, and why I got involved within trading. Um, so if you'd like to come over here, Dale, and, and have a look at my... Have a look at my uh, bit of paper I've got in front of me. So what, what I've got here is what I was looking at when I first started, which is a lifeline, excuse my poor handwriting. Um, but you've got your, where you start your, your days when you're, when you're born from here. So your average life expectancy, around 80 to 85. Now, each one's a notch, 10 years old, 20 years old, 30 years old, 40 years old, 50, 60, 70, and 80. Now, Majority of us, we have fun and we're free up to around 17, 18. So this is our fun kind of patch, our development stage and our learning. So that's pretty much up to the age of 18 in this day and age. So you get to have fun. That's, 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 that's crucial that we have that fun. But what a lot of people then go and do is they then go and work. And they work all the way from the 18 all the way up to around 60 to 65, depending on how good their pension package is. And then we retire for this final bit of our life. But what a lot of people don't consider is that do not think it's worth taking risk rather than spending pretty much majority of your timeline of your life, you're working, yeah? You're working for something that you don't really enjoy doing. And some stats for you, 13% of people in the UK actually are only, um, only enjoy their job 
um, fully. So, you know, that's 13% of people that live this life actually enjoy this entire period here. So it's only 13% of people that enjoy that. So you've really got to kind of work out what it is that you want to do with your life and understand that taking a risk is worth it because otherwise you're going to be stuck within this cycle of 9 till 5, living the majority of your life, not actually enjoying it. Um, and you've got to kind of question, is that something that you want to do? And uh, for myself, I, I didn't want to do that. Um, and that's exactly why I got involved in trading. Um, it gives you the freedom to travel. It gives you the, um, the freedom to work when you want and, and how you want. You know, so for example, me and one of the traders went out to Dubai, traded from Dubai, come to the office, trade from here, trade remote, trade from my garden, trade on the beach. Um, it's very much down to your lifestyle and, and what you want. But whether it's trading or not trading, I definitely advise that you think about that timeline and think, where do I truly want to work and how can I get there? Because it's really worth taking that risk. Because once you've dissolved that and you kind of grow up, you become an adult, you generally feel that you don't have enough time to do what you want to do. And it's crucial that you make that time or you find a way. For example, trading is my route to enjoy what I want to do in my own time and, and to make more time for me. I think it's important to cover uh, the characteristics of a trader and uh, what makes my team successful um, as traders as well as entrepreneurs. And I think the first thing is, is your work ethic. You know, a lot of these traders, these guys as well, um, you know, they're all in the office first thing, you know, 6.30, 7 in the morning, and they don't leave until kind of 7 p.m., sometimes even later, depending on what news releases are coming out of the market. If you want to be good at something, you should spend your time developing yourself, your skill set, and really becoming a professional. And there's nothing more than, um, than, than that that shows it within work ethic is, is putting the time and effort in to achieve that. And what you get with that is you find that the people around you are more uh, feel inclined to help you because they can see how much you want to develop as an individual and uh, as a trader. Um, you know, there's no such thing as being on time. You know, we see people late uh, time and time again, and those guys just drop off. You know, you find that they aren't successful, and it's just because they don't they don't really want it enough. I think that um, you know you need to set micro goals. We all have goals. On the I've got a board over here behind us. We have month on month goals. And, um, you know, from those, having micro goals that we can work towards each and every single month helps us on our target to, to what we deem as successful. You know, when I was looking at my Audi R8 V10 Plus, right, let's get that, um, making a certain amount of trade profits, okay, let's get that on to the next one and so on and so forth. It's all about having a challenge, enjoying what you're doing, and chasing those dreams to, to better yourself. Um, I think I've spoken enough now about uh, the traits of what it takes to be successful. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them and uh, we'll reply back to them in the comments. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening.